Amen. 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 We are studying in Matthew 24, and this past week, on the second part, we began talking about the abomination of desolation, and I will read that verse 15, Matthew 24, verse 15. It says, When you therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, Stand in the holy place, whosoever, whoso readeth, let him understand. And uh, this past week I read on down there uh, to, through 21 where it talks about great tribulation. Uh, but I want to, we did not complete our study of the abomination of desolation. And I want to try to pick up where we left off and and to define those words abomination and desolation because both of those words have a variety of meanings abomination ranges in its meaning from eating something that's unclean to sexual sins that are abominable in Proverbs 6, it talks about things in that passage that God hates. And that's Proverbs 6, 16 to 19 says, These six things does the Lord hate. Yea, seven are an abomination unto him. 17 says, A proud look, a lying tongue, and hands that shed innocent blood. Verse 18 says, An heart that devises wicked imaginations, feet that be swift in running to mischief. 19 says, A false witness that speaks lies, and he that sows discord among brethren. So in Proverbs 6, 16 to 19, you can see that those things are an abomination and that the Lord hates them. I would have to say this, that most frequently it refers to idol worship, which is idolatry. And I want to read to you out of Exodus 20, when the Lord gave Moses the Ten Commandments. In Exodus 20, it starts in the first verse and says, and God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Verse 3 says, Thou shalt have no other gods before me. And verse 4 says, Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. And verse 5 says, Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them, for I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. That's um, all concerning the word abomination. When it comes to desolation, that too has a variety of meanings. And it could refer to a widow, a, a woman that's lost her husband and that she has no children, no husband, no children. She would be considered desolate. She has no means to support herself. She is desolate and another one would be a place where there is little a place little to no life as in certain desert areas have you ever seen pictures of um, the Sahara Desert or maybe you've been to sand dunes and where there's a vast dunes of sand and you don't there's no growth there it's just mm -hmm. sand 
Um, mountaintops would be another place where it's desolate and that uh, nothing grows there. Uh, you'll find snow, rocks, that's basically on those high, high mountains. And um, the other place which you would find desolation would be as a result of a war, a war. And there is a passage in the book of Joel that I want to read to you uh, because in that passage, uh, in Joel chapter 2, verses 1 through 4. Job. Joel. J-O-E-L. Okay. Joel. Blow you the trumpet in Zion, and sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord cometh, for it is nigh at hand. Just want you to know that the day of the Lord is mentioned numerous times throughout the Bible, and it is talking about that great and terrible day when the Lord comes and is filled with wrath. It's, it's a day of wrath. Verse 2 here in Joel 2.2, 2, it says, A day of darkness and of gloominess, a day of clouds and of thick darkness. As the morning spread upon the mountains, a great people and a strong, there hath not ever been the like, neither shall any more after it. I want you to know that do you realize that that's telling you that this great people that is strong that they've never been before and neither shall be any more after it even to the years of many generations that you'll find that in Joel 2 2 it says a fire devours before them and behind them a flame burns the land is as the garden of Eden before them. Listen to this. Like the garden of Eden. We talked about how uh, that was the place where Adam and Eve were. There was food to, on the trees. Uh, but it says, and behind them desolate wilderness. Yea, and nothing shall escape them. It, I, I wanted to read to verse 4. It says, The appearance of them is as the appearance of horses and horsemen, so they shall run. Uh, okay. Look at, we got this open to Joel. I want you to look over at uh, the first chapter and verse 6. Joel 1, 6. It says, for a nation is come up upon my land, strong and without number, whose teeth are the teeth of a lion, and he hath the cheek teeth of a great lion. And then I'll read you verses uh, 14 and 15 here. It says, Sanctify ye a fast, call a solemn assembly, Gather the elders and all the inhabitants of the land into the house of the Lord your God and cry unto the Lord. 15 says, Alas for the day, for the day of the Lord is at hand and as a destruction from the Almighty shall it come. So uh, there's a warning there and, and that we are to pray. When you see this happening, that's a time to gather together in fasting and prayer. Yeah. So we see that the desolation, uh, when you, especially when you um, compare Joel here, uh, and I wanted to, what this reminds me of when I read Joel, it reminds me in Revelation chapter 9 where it talks about um, the locusts that come up. Uh, in Revelation 9, it, it talks about them, that they come out of the bottomless pit 
and they are tormenting people. It says in verse 6, Revelation 9, 6, In those days shall men seek death and shall not find it, shall desire to die, and death shall flee from them. And then it says here in verse 8, And they had the hair of women, and their teeth were as the teeth of lions. So I, I compare that to what I have read in, in Joel uh, chapter 1 and, and then chapter 2, that they're uh, in an army. And of course, you know, when you look at the sixth angel that sounds uh, that second woe, it says in verse 12 of Revelation 9, 12, it says one woe is past and behold, there comes two war woes more after that in verse 13 where it talks about the sixth angel sounding and we see in verse 14 that there are four angels loosed uh, which are bound in the great river Euphrates and those angels those four angels that are bound those are not good angels uh, good angels are not bound but the evil ones are evil ones uh, which are prepared for an hour, a day, and a month, and a year to slay the third part of men. And it says in verse 16, the number of the army of the horsemen were 200,000 thousand. That's 200 million. That's a great army. And it also says in this passage, if you look at verse 18, this is Revelation 9, 18, it says, By these three was the third part of men killed, by the fire, by the smoke, and by the brimstone, which issued out of their mouths. So that, I see that as war, and it says it talks about them coming, and that there's a, a great killing uh, a lot of people call this the sixth trumpet war. Sometimes people refer to it as the third world war. So it's, it's a devastating war. When I look in Luke, the gospel of Luke, in chapter 21 and verse 20, it says, And when you shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies then know that the desolation thereof is nigh so i hope you understand that uh just as abominations most prevalent uh definition for an abomination is idolatry or idol worship uh the same with the desolation is that that's most frequently done through war war is devastating it uh, is just a ruining of everything around it. This past uh, week when we talked, uh, both Matthew 24 and Mark 13 make reference to the book of Daniel. And so I want to go into the book of Daniel and look again at Daniel 11. In Daniel chapter 11 and verse 31, it says, And arms shall stand on his part, and they shall pollute the sanctuary of strength, and shall take away the daily sacrifice, and they shall place the abomination that makes desolate. This past week when we were studying, we made mention of Revelation 13. In uh, that passage in Revelation 13, it talks specifically about the kingdom of the beast, that he receives his power from Satan. It is a kingdom of darkness. Uh, we found in that chapter that there will be an image that will make an image that life will be given to that image and then it will require that everyone worship that image 
And if you refuse to worship the image, then you will be put to death. You know, I always thought when they're talking about uh, worship the, the idol or the beast, the idol, I always thought it was going to be like what they set up, like golden calf or, you know, or that Dagon or something, you know, for Dagon, however you say it. I always thought it was going to be a Yes, an inanimate stone or something, you know, that was man-made. But I really think this is talking about a man, mm -hmm. yeah. the beast. The image of the beast is going to be like the devil incarnate. Well, I tell you, our technology has. Um, yeah, it could be a. It's artificial in my form. mind. It could be artificial. The, exactly. What is that AI? And or? that might be why it's called a beast. It's yeah. Of a person. Yeah, the system is a beast, I think. Uh, the and, beast is a system. And you know, they can, they can make a person, they can kill him, and they can bring him back. I mean, yeah. you know, because he's not even alive. It's, it's, it's a person. I it mean, it's, so it's a far, artificial thing. A technology is so far ahead with artificial intelligence as they say artificial intelligence is creating artificial intelligence mm -hmm. in other words it's outsmarting man well, exactly. and it's 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 creating and doing the thing I mean, you made a monster and the monster is taking over is what's happened <laughs> it's it's a terrible thing i'm yeah. laughing but i'm it's bringing right. back memories of old science fiction Science fiction stuff. Yeah, yeah sci fi. You know they do it in those states, and that's why those movies are out there. I think so. They, they, it was real, but we thought it was not. Yeah. You know, you don't know what you're going to see. God created man and woman. I don't know why I'm writing this up, but God created man and woman, a male and female. And they are teetering on the point of trying, they're even saying it that men can have babies and stuff. And we don't, we laugh and we think they're crazy. You know, I watched a movie a long time ago and I can't remember what it was, where he, this guy landed on a planet and got with this other guy and they were like the two lives left there and one was an alien and it was like, like a monster but it talked like a man, you know. I mean, it looked like a body with a turtle head or something. But he turned out he was male and female because he had a baby and died. I mean, I, who would, mine's the imagination of man. Well, you know, these men, this woman that thinks she's a man, and so she gets changed into a man, but she still has these women parts, she can have a baby. But it's a man. I'm a man. Yeah, I'm, I'm having a baby. I think it's just sick. God help us. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> You gotta be careful because you know they passed in Ireland that it is against the law for you to to watch something that is spewing what they call hate speech or artificial intel or not artificial intelligence uh, fake news and you're going to be fined if you watch it or if you put it out they're going to fine you and lock you up even if you watch it. Where is this? Ireland. It's coming to America, they say. Okay. Oh, it's oh. It's a beast. I know. We yeah. went out on a rabbit. Oh. Okay. When I read you this um, verse 31 in Daniel 11, Daniel 11, 31, it talks about that the daily, uh, they'll take away the daily sacrifice. Uh -huh. Okay. They, the, there's a clue here, okay, that you're going to watch for, that when the change, you, we're looking for a temple, we talked about that uh, a few weeks ago, a third temple will be built, and they will begin with their sacrifices, right? But they are going to stop that daily sacrifice, and they are going to place their the abomination that makes desolate. Whatever this image is that's referred to in Revelation 13, that is what I personally believe 
that that is the abomination. And, and why does it make desolate? Is because at some point, and I'm going to talk about time here in just a second, uh, because God will allow it to go on for a certain period of time, and then all the armies of the world will come together and converge upon this place. Are we all on the same page there? Mm -hmm. uh, the reason why I focus here on Daniel 11 is that there are references to the end. When I say to the end, uh, to the end of this age that culminates with the coming of the Lord, the end, okay? So I can look here in Daniel 11 and see in verse 27, it says, both these king's heart shall be to do mischief, and they shall speak lies at one table, but it shall not prosper, for yet the end shall be at the time appointed. Okay, mm -hmm. that particular passage has a couple of men at a table. Uh, this happens quite frequently with world leaders that they get together. It's basically telling you that they're lying to each other, right? It's probably not the first time, not the last time. Right. Uh, verse 35 here, it says, I do believe that there are saints here. These, this passage here uh, is part of where it talks about uh, people of understanding. Uh, and then it says in for 35, some of them of understanding shall fall to try them and to purge and to make them white even to the time of the end because it is yet for a time appointed. There is a fullness of time. I just, when it says for a time appointed, there is a day, the day of the Lord. When he comes, that is a day. And um, also again in verse 40, it says, and at the time of the end shall the king of the south push at him and the king of the north shall come against him like a whirlwind with chariots and with horsemen and with many ships and he shall enter into the countries and shall overflow and pass over. I hope you see there in the very beginning of that at the time of the end we're talking about a specific time designated for the end also from, uh, in Daniel 12 it says uh, in verse 1 and 2 it says and at that time shall Michael now this Michael is talking about the archangel it says at that time shall Michael stand up the great prince which stands up for the children of thy people People, and there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation even to that same time and at that time thy people shall be delivered every one that shall be found written in the book and many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt. I read you that passage because it's very clear to me that that is talking about the end, okay? The end time. I and I can understand, I, I don't want you to think that I'm ignorant that a lot of passages in the book of Daniel, uh, some people will say, well, that's already in the past. I didn't mention Daniel chapter eight, um, because Daniel 8 talks about abomination of desolation there also. Just want you to know that there are passages that are mixed in time. Right. Uh, a time when uh, the Greece came against the Medes and the Persian. We, have, we can see through history that there was Babylon and then they were overtaken by the Medes and the Persian, and after them came 
Alexander the Great, the Greece, mm -hmm. uh, people of Greece overtook them, mm -hmm. and then they were overtaken by Rome. The Roman Empire followed Greece. And so uh, I, I am aware of those things, and it, there's a fine line for saying this is past and this is future. Right. But when you can clearly see in here, I read you uh, one, two, three, four, five passages here at the end of Daniel that all say the end. We are looking for these events to take place. To take place. They haven't taken place yet, but they will take place. Okay, now he, here's, I want to continue with that thought of time. I just mentioned to you that Daniel 11 and 12 is talking about the end time. Yes. But now let's look at a specific span of time, okay? In Daniel 11 and 45, it says here, and he, this is what the, I would refer to as the Antichrist, Revelation 13, calls him um, the beast. Uh, here in Daniel 11, you look at 21, you hear him described as a vile person. And in Daniel 7, you see him described as the little horn the little horn okay 